Abbeydale Industrial Hamlet is one of the most complete early manufacturing sites in the world. The area has been a place of metalworking for more than 800 years. It may look quiet and peaceful now, but in its heyday, the works was a place of intense activity. Hundreds of highly skilled people spent their working lives here. Furnaces belched out heat and smoke. Forges and grindstones were used to pound and sculpt steel into shape. At its peak in the 1850s, Abbeydale Works produced thousands of scythes and edge tools every year. The tools were famous for their superior quality and craftsmanship. They were exported to countries as far afield as Canada, India and Australia. The reason this site was chosen was the fast-flowing waters of the River Sheaf, which were dammed to create a source of power. Central to the whole operation were the four water wheels, which provided the power to fuel the forges, feed the furnaces and drive the machinery. The manufacturing process began in the charge room, where the head melter prepared and weighed the raw materials for high-quality crucible steel. The exact recipe was a closely guarded secret. Crucible steel is made by melting unrefined blister steel, which is broken up and mixed with crushed limestone and other ingredients. In the room below, the pot maker mixed china clay, coke dust and water. He trod the clay for five to six hours to mix the materials and remove air bubbles. The crucible pots that he made were fired in a special oven for about eight hours. The pots were then taken into the next room and placed in the crucible furnace where they were loaded with the raw materials and heated by fires from below. The melt took about four hours. When the steel was ready, the puller out used a pair of long-handled tongs to remove the crucible. He passed it quickly to the teamer, who poured the molten steel into an ingot mould. Scythe blades were made by heating a piece of crucible steel between layers of wrought iron, then hammering the sandwich together. This forge welding process required the huge power of tilt hammers, which drew their energy directly from the water wheels. Once the structure of the scythes had been laid down, they were passed to the grinders, who ground sharp edges on the blades. The grinder sat astride a wooden horsing and pressed the blade onto a spinning grindstone. The leather driving belt was turned by a line shaft from the water wheel. The finished scythes were painted with blacking to prevent rust. They were wrapped in straw rope and stored in the warehouse. The blades were usually sold without handles because they were cheaper to ship. Abbeydale scythes were sold around the world. For centuries, scythes were one of the most important agricultural tools used by farm labourers to clear, cut and harvest. In the early 1900s, the demand for hand tools fell. Production moved to a modern factory in the city, powered by steam and electricity. When the works closed, in 1933, the future of Abbeydale hung in the balance. Sheffield philanthropist J.G. Graves bought the site and donated it to the city in the hope that it would become a museum of industrial history. Restoration didn't begin until 1960, and it was another 10 years before his vision became a reality. Thank you.
Today, thanks to support from the Heritage Lottery Fund, Abbeydale has a brand new learning centre, restored machinery, and a team of dedicated staff and volunteers, all determined to keep this historical gem sparkling for generations to come. <laughs>